It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where we'll see a brawl inside the AFC West. It's the Raiders and the Broncos, and it comes your way next. In a few months' time, snow will blanket the Great Peaks just to our west, but for now, summer still in full swing at Empower Field at Mile High. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Denver Broncos. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, the wait is over. The regular season is upon us. It is kickoff weekend around the NFL. Our two teams here getting in a final tune-up, but let's look ahead to the 2023 season. What are you going to be watching for? How about some of the recognizable new faces in new places? Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, Odell Beckham Jr. The identity of teams under new coaches in places like Houston, Carolina, and Denver. And then, of course, the rookies. After the draft, we want to see how they perform. from Denver. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A man who was lost for the year in week four last season. Here's Javante Williams. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. That's a very nice game there. A confidence-building run. Love the execution up front. And the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. On second down, Williams. And he's going to have the Broncos first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted, the running game. And guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. In motion left goes a tight end. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one yard loss. That's gonna bring up second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They wanna run the football, but that means they probably wanna run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Wilson's throw taken in by Sutton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. So for this defense, a tall order ahead trying to defend against Russell Wilson. Charles, your keys for how they might go about keeping him in check? Well, before we even get to the keys, let's start with the problems he presents because he feels pressure so well. He's got a great sixth sense. 
maybe even a seventh and eight. He knows where the pressure is coming from. He knows how to slide away from it, sometimes run away from it, and then he finds good throwing lanes to deliver downfield. So to me, it's that pressure inside, big tall guys to make him try and throw over them and make his height work against him. Second down and four. They go back to the ground with Williams. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Throw right side is going to be caught by Judy. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. And this is exactly the kind of drive you're hoping for out of the gates. They mentioned the run and the pass well, keeping this defense off balance early. And they're on the march here with another first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Here's Wilson. This one swung out to Williams. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. To throw is Wilson. And that is incomplete. The Raider defense strong on that one in coverage, and now it's fourth. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. The kick by Lutz is good, and the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's three zip. Well, given where they started that opening drive, CD, I think to get three out of it, probably a pretty good start that they'll take. I think you're exactly right about that because they just shook off the effects of the kickoff in field position and took the ball and moved it downfield. Didn't pay off with a touchdown, but that drive, that was really nice for them, and they did come away with three points. to kick it away. And this take it in at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Raiders offense heading out with their new man under center for 2023, the former Patriot, former 49er, Jimmy Garoppolo. It's another typical season for Jimmy G last year when he was out there. He was excellent, leading the 49ers to seven wins and throwing four times as many touchdowns as interceptions. Then the injury bug bit again. But Las Vegas, they're counting on him being able to do the exact same thing they saw in San Francisco, but avoiding injury while doing so. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. To throw is Garoppolo. Catch is made by Hunter Renfro. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Now 
Now a quick throw out wide to Myers. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Now a play fake. Garoppolo under a heavy rush and down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. So the sack of Garoppolo. And now what can they come up with on third and long? Now back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. So on fourth down, here's A.J. Cole to punt for the Raiders. Back deep for Denver, the rookie Marvin Mims. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. This will be fielded at the 17. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Now it's Wilson. Over the middle complete, that's Sutton. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Throwing is Wilson. Open man, and again it's Sutton. And Sutton will have a Broncos first down as the tackle made up around the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Play action. Now Wilson. And down he goes. Brought down a Raiders sack. Max Crosby blowing up the play and getting the sack. Las Vegas' pass rush was one of the weakest in the league last season, but don't tell that to Crosby. He earned Defensive Player of the Year votes with 12 and a half sacks, nearly half of his team's total. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now Wilson. Throw left side complete. That's Williams. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Wilson. could have been trouble. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. DeAndre Carter back deep. Taking it about the 36. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And it'll be Raiders football first and 10. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. 
Someone's looking fresh, and his old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. Second and a couple. Once again, it's Jacobs. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. I think what we just saw their partner was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Trying to run forward with Jacobs. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. The defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And Denver getting set to take the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still, they've got the lead here, and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. From the gun, it's Stenham. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense got it, they were already within a shadow of the goalpost. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Here's Stidham to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. On the return, Carter. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. And the Raiders will have a short field to work with as they take over. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be second and very short. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Las Vegas with the football. Options galore here, second and a few inches, as they've got it as we resume action. On play action, now Garoppolo. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. Looking to throw, Garoppolo working the middle of the 
feel that he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw, it's Garoppolo. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's actually utilized more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. But he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put yeah, there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. They fake the give. Now Garoppolo looks to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Frank Clark fighting his way home to get the sack. I think a lot of time when we see a sack, you say, well, you blame it on the offensive line, the quarterback, but here, maybe you just tip your hat to the defender. What a play. Yeah, and I think sometimes they just get a sense of the play before the ball's even snapped. Kind of like a sprinter anticipating the gun in a race. They're off, and guess what? The quarterback's down. And he's going to go down again. He couldn't get away there on third down. The pressure too much, and he's sacked for a loss of 12. Allen has improved himself every chance he could and increased his sack total each of his four years with the Cardinals. Now with the Broncos, they're counting on a breakout being right around the corner. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Denver's offense now set to go. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now to this point. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. And they'll run the end around here with Judy. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big, or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that, because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. His throw incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now it's Wilson. Jerry Tillery running in there and setting him down. And down he goes again. A bevy of sacks in less than a half. But this defense is still losing the game. They've got to fix something because there should be no excuse for losing with an effort like this on that side of the ball. They need to take advantage when their defense is generating this kind of pressure so early in the game. Now 
throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. Ah, oh, that's well done defensively. They get the pressure they needed on third down. All the receivers are locked up tight, and they force that quarterback to just throw it away. Riley Dixon now to punt it away. Here comes Carter. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. The results for them so far not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. A handoff, Jacobs running to the left. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield, it's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set. And that 3-4, you've got to have your guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center that knows, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage, and that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. Solid gain of 18 and a Raider first down. That time a little misdirection really seemed to fool the defense. And think of it this way. From the time you're in high school, you're taught to watch film and pick up tendencies. Sometimes they can use those against you, though, when they break their own tendencies and hit you back the opposite direction, huh? This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Jacobs going to try the middle. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Now they'll throw with Garoppolo. And his throw here is incomplete. Now, that's absolutely terrific technique right there by the corner. Exhibit A. Zone coverage, knew where his man was in relation to the football at all times, and made a nice play. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Now Garoppolo on the bootleg. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target. Able to pick up another first down. On play action, it's Garoppolo. It gets it right back to Mayer. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Man coverage on the left side, so I really like the design of this play because they opened up the field and brought their tight end the other way on a crossing route. That's a lot of ground to cover if you're a defender. I've been there before, unable to stay with his man there. And yet again, it's Garoppolo. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Three yards is the game that time. Second and goal.
Jacobs will take this one in for a Vegas touchdown. Ah, what a luxury it is to be able to call a bowling ball like Josh Jacobs down near the goal line. 5'10", 220 pounds, and he's not afraid to get in there and get the tough yards. He finishes off this drive with a touchdown run. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that drive goes a full 80 yards and 10 plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. the touchdown ready to kick it away is Carlson from a yard or two deep here comes a return and he'll be brought down shy of the 20 so the decision to bring it out of the end zone not a good one the offense getting set again we spotlight Javante Williams the running back and I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit he's he's been great but they haven't scored a lot of points think they still have to show him as a threat make sure he touches it a few times but as you pointed out use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board but he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running yeah, he's established himself well now can they put more points up from the 25 here's second and three In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Up the middle, it's Williams. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. This offense so far on third down, just one for five to this point. Here it's third and two. They go play action with Wilson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. I know you're trying not to scoreboard watch, but you only got three points. You got to hope that that type of play there gives you some positive momentum going into the half. Yeah, I need to do something to get more than that three number that they have on the scoreboard right now. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 45-yard line. Now Wilson running left on the option. Six yards there on the keeper at second down. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. This second and four. They go play action now. Wilson. And this one is incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. To throw is Wilson. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. And that's the knowledge you gained from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Too long for a field goal. Too short to punt that in between range. And they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. That pickup goes for 25. What a flip of the script from fourth down to first. We always talk about big-time players make big-time plays and big-time moments. I think that fourth down qualified. That was a heck of a throw. So after the big play on fourth, here's first and ten. Oh, oh, oh. 
They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second and three, and they trail seven to three, but getting close to changing that. And this defense hoping to limit them to a field goal to preserve the lead. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. down but this one winds up to be incomplete the defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield there's a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage and that throw had no shot so the incompletion and now it's second and 10 again from the 25 yard line Garoppolo looks to throw open man right side Myers the Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Third and two. Now Garoppolo. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free and it's fourth down. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Here's A.J. Cole now to punt this one away. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, this defense is getting after it now. They get the sack on first down, and now the pressure's there again, and that forces a throw away. Now a second and 10. Wilson. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Final play of the half, it's Wilson. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We just watched a solid first half from the 2022 rushing champ, Josh Jacobs. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
Raiders with the lead already, and they will get the football here as the second half is now underway. No return here for Carter, and this will be a touchback. The Raider offense ready to go here to start the third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line can play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front pounding on the defense right now with the running game and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. Garoppolo's throw taken in by Adams. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big time play by the defense. On second down, Jacobs. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. It'll be a gain of two on the play, but they'll remain a few inches short here with third down looming. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. He's got a man open. It's Hunter Renfro. And he is going to have the Raiders first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Here's second and 10. Play action, Garoppolo. And he's gonna be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Randy Gregory from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop something big to knock them back on their heels? So the sack of Garoppolo, and now what can they come up with on third and long? From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. And it's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. The kick by Carlson is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though. Three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. After the main field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. 
And he works free. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. Jerry Tillery picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. How to approach this. Third down and 16 yards to go. Here's Wilson. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Raider drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and 10. And Garoppolo going to lead the Raiders up here first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. He'll give it to Jacobs to start the drive. And he'll use his blockers to get this up over the 20 to the 21. 74 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Second down and three. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. Treads him with a stiff arm. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 14 yards is the pickup there in a Raider first. A nice carry by Jacobs, who's coming off a career year. Just when it seemed like Vegas may have been ready to move on from him. Led the NFL with over 1,600 yards and was more than deserving of his first All-Pro selection. Throwing on first is Garoppolo. Over to Hooper on the sideline. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide it. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And he's got some space here. And some pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 11 more on that one, and another first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. On first down, they go with Jacobs again. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh oh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Now a play fake. Garoppolo looking deep for Adams. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. It's a big play there for Vegas. 41 yards. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field, 
pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. Austin Hooper, a five-yard touchdown. And the Raiders go up by two touchdowns. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the lead is now 17-3. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. Taking it about the one. Sheds off the tackle. And a pretty slick return there. Almost got it to the 45. Officially, they'll call him down at the 44. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They begin the drive with Williams. Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 120 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. Again, it's Williams. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, if you like the guys who run the ball, you're enjoying watching this. But the other guys, especially the defense coordinator, trying to figure out an answer on how to slow down the running game, I think maybe starts to call more blitzes because you can call run blitzes in order to try and get more people to the point of attack. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. This will be caught, Judy. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A good pick up there, 22. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Mike Burton taking it in from four yards out. And the Broncos are back within a score. And they just powered it in right there, Charles. Three tight ends out on the field, the fullbacks for the defense. They knew what was coming. They knew, but they weren't able to stop them. They knew they had to meet them with a little bit of force. But on that play, the big guys up front won the day. Lutz with the extra point. And that slices the lead down to 17-10. A drive there of just four plays. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. DeAndre Carter returning it. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So out come the Raiders. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and 10.
On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. After another impressive run, the question has to be asked, how do you slow these guys down running the football? I think they're going to try and get more people to the point of attack, try and get more people to the line of scrimmage, almost use a variety of run blitzes in order to try and get it done. Throw right side, pulled in by Mayer. No gain on the play. And it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. On third down, here comes Jacobs. Fourth down now after a loss of two. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on for the fifth time here today. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. This is fielded at the 27. They'll call it a punt of 44 yards. The return was for seven. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On second down, Williams. Now the ball comes loose, and the Raiders pick it up, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. But he has been a workhorse for them in this game, and ball security hasn't been an issue until that point. Yeah, and let's face it, when he's going to carry the ball that many times, he becomes more and more of a target for the defense, knowing that he's going to be the primary guy. They'll just send more and more players towards him, trying to make sure they knock the ball free. Here comes the offense again, and let's focus on Josh Jacobs for a moment. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. On third down, Wilson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to bring up second down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. Here's a second and five. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy, and it's third and five.
Wilson will throw again. And to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20 yard line. Just shy of the 20. 23 yards, the final tally. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Here's Wilson. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Second and ten. Now a handoff, here's Williams. And a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. They'll fake the jet sweep, and instead of give up the middle to Williams. And he'll only get this to the 17, well shy of what he needed. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your run. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Frank Clark able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking the lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. He's got his target. That's complete. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. They will run the draw with Jacobs. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. As we get late in this one, 
is altitude a factor for a visiting team in Denver? Is that something that's overplayed? No, it's real. And I know a lot of the visiting teams like to downplay it because they don't want to get into the heads of their players. But you can't avoid it. As soon as you get to the locker room, you get to the stadium, they always post it in there. Welcome to Denver. Altitude 5,280 feet. The air is rare. So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and 10. Once again, it's Jacobs. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. Well, they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 128 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. On the handoff, this is Jacobs. He gets them a little over half of what they need, and now they're looking at a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, well, we've got third and five or less. We have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. The kick by Carlson is good. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. After the made field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And coming out now, the Broncos. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Screenplay set up for Williams. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. From the 35, here's second and a couple. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. Javante Williams, and he takes it into the end zone across the chalk. Now there is a flag down, but I think that's offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think that's going to stand, partner. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. 
Lutz good on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. DeAndre Carter now from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Now a quick throw out wide to Myers. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up second down. Here's Jacobs from the gun. A nice little juke. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That good for 22 and a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. play action now Garoppolo and that going to be incomplete too tough to hold on to that one it's second down he did an okay job of absorbing the hit just couldn't secure the football through the catch and he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion that's something defenders work on all the time if you're there make the contact but continue to work your way through the receiver so they can't possess the football and turn it into a catch and look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Broncos are right back in this football game. A seismic shift in momentum here in the fourth quarter. That's the break that the defense needed. And you know as well as I do, people are going to question the play call in that situation. Sometimes you have to question the execution, not necessarily the call. And in this case, those defenders found a way to give their team a chance. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. A golden opportunity for them now following the interception. They need to try to at least get three. Obviously, a touchdown puts them in a much more secure position. Flushed out right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it, and he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. Now Williams running left, and he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. Now Wilson on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They'll try again here, second and 10. Now Wilson on second down. And smartly going into the slide there, Wilson has enough for the first. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's gonna be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart, took it himself, found a way to reset the downs and advance the ball. Three 
Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw here caught by Mims. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They gotta find a way to gash the defense downfield. Here's second down and three. Wilson to throw. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. Well, to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. The kick by Lutz is good. And we are all tied here in the final stages. So a big kick to get this back to even. Yet now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get into overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you. But you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And Carter deciding not to bring this one out. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked his special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Now Garoppolo. Able to connect with Jacobs. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Nothing open downfield. They went underneath. Yeah, see if you can get it to your running back. See if you can make someone miss in the open field. The noise is getting deafening. Here's third down and three. Garoppolo the throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Here's A.J. Cole now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. They'll come up first and 10 here. Here's Wilson. Throw there is incomplete. Here comes second down. Throwing now is Wilson. And that's caught by Williams. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. 
The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside. And they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they use your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline, he knows something. He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. On third down, here's Williams. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts. And that play going absolutely nowhere. And now it's fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. They'd like to avoid overtime here, so maybe they can work the sidelines, but then defensively, how do they adjust to that if they do work the sideline? It's the old leverage game, and we usually talk about leverage at the line of scrimmage, right? Who's going to win with the low blocking and everything that goes along with that? But in this case, you're trying as a defender to leverage them towards the middle of the field, not let them get to the sidelines and try and tackle them in bounds in order to run the clock out. Chess match here late. Here's second and a yard. Back to throw, Garoppolo. He gets this to Myers. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. What pressure as this thing all rests on the foot of Daniel Carlson. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. This from Tom Dempsey range here. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and that changes everything here in OT. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. So the Raiders are going to get the football first here in the overtime session as we are back underway. And no return here to begin the overtime session. That'll be a touchback. And now here come the Raiders. And Garoppolo going to lead the Raiders up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. Meanwhile, Garoppolo's throw taken in by Adams. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Looking to throw Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. 
Fourth down now coming up. The temptation to go for it probably there always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. A 40-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Broncos are about set to go on offense. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one. And it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Now what can Wilson do here in the OT? Short throw caught by Dulcich. And oh, he's just gonna be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here? You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. On the return, Carter. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and it'll be Raiders football first and 10. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. And Garoppolo gonna lead the Raiders up here first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start this drive out on the ground, and he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. Second down, Jacobs once more. Four yards on the pick up there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. To throw, it's Garoppolo. That is caught, and he is going to have the Raiders first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. So he hooked up with a veteran there, and in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Stuck for a loss by the linebacker, Josie Jewell. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They don't go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, he might reduce him, might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. Third down and ten. Looking to throw. Garoppolo. It's caught inside the 25. A huge play there in overtime. And even 40 yards. Just straight money right there. The biggest drive of the game, a chance to win it in overtime. If they've been saving that play, they sure pulled it out at the right time. A huge turn of events there.
What pressure as this thing all rests on the foot of Daniel Carlson. And now the Broncos will burn another timeout here. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And the Raiders escape with a victory. So this one, a victory for the Raiders.